My name is Roger Evans, and I live in Placidas here. I've been here 46 or 47 years. I don't even remember anymore. But I get up in the morning, and I see that beautiful mountain and the contrasting light and things that maybe somebody else might only see and not take notice of. But I'm one of those people who does. Just two weeks ago, I went up to Tunnel Springs to see what the water situation was coming out of the mountain. And it's our water source for our well. When I went up to the spring there, I checked the pipe where it comes out of the mountain, and it was dribbling a little bit. Um, I'm concerned that because we haven't had precipitation, we're going to be in trouble. Anyway, there was a, a little frog sitting there. And this is very, very unusual, but the temperatures have been so warm this year that um, it, it has drawn wildlife out of hibernation. Anyway, this frog said to me as I was looking at it, kiss me and I will turn into a beautiful princess willing to do anything that you would desire. And I thought about that. I thought about that. And then I picked up the frog and I stuck it in my pocket. And from the pocket, the frog said, well, why did you do that? And I said, at 86 years old, I'm more interested in a talking frog. So I'm starting off with that line because I want you to not take anything that I say worth anything. It's, it's, it's all uh, fantasy. But that's the world that I live in. I live in a fantasy, and I'm living in la-la land, and I'm a dreamer. I'm a dreamer. And back in 1965 uh, and uh, in that era, and the Vietnam War's going, Martin Luther King and the Kennedys had been assassinated, and we we're living in a turmoil situation. Uh, my wife and I would get together with another family who were concerned, as we were, about what's happening in the world. And we would sit there and talk and pat each other on the back about this or that and, and think about what we possibly can do. At that time, I just felt that really there's nothing that I can physically do uh, to make a, a difference in the world. That was a time when I got a divorce. I um, uh, thought, oh, this is a perfect opportunity to take my half of the revenue from our home there and do something about problems of people getting along in the world. I took off and I went down to New Mexico. I had heard that there were people here that dropped out from society and were building weird kinds of things here. I thought that was just the kind of a place where I would be welcome to experiment with my building project. The kids were in Dome Valley there, were building domes out of car hoods and leftover recycled things. And West Placidas here, there were people using um, leftover two-by-fours and all kinds of leftover building materials and creating their own sculptural environments. Wow, this was fantastic to me. This is the kind of place that I felt that I could do uh, what I want to do. And that was to build sculptural homes around a community house which would take people away from the, the normal traditional home. And this is what the kind of freedom I wanted was to build sculptural space that you just happened to be able to live in. During that, the early 70s, I applied for a grant to the National Endowment and got a $5,000 award for the planning of such a community, which I had already done, but I took that $5,000 and bought building materials to build the first phase of, of what I felt was going to be a community of 
of shared things. You know, like when we're here in New Mexico, there's one place that is better than another to put a garden. There's one place that's better to put the animals, sharing all those entities of the environment and not impose our vehicles onto this uh, environment. Where do these ideas come from? It has to do with having grown up with Quakers, and they, they were pacifists. When I was in the military, I was never comfortable going against the dictates of the Quaker community. That's where these ideas really originated. These people were activists. In Ithaca, New York is where I grew up. They established an international friendship center just after the Second World War because they wanted to start with young people, young children, to realize that they're, all children are alike, that they have to be carefully taught to do the dictates of whatever their community is in. They felt that adults have formed their opinion about things so that they're not open to change or to, uh, to feel things. So I went ahead and, and built this community house, but due to um, lack of funds that were approaching, I abandoned the project when Ronald Reagan came in and changed the whole attitude of any kind of uh, experiments with people working together at something. We went back to a consumer uh, environment. What I did is I turned to my art and started producing paintings. And what we paint and how our attitude is, what our sense of humor is and so forth, actually people respond to that kind of uh, approach. And that's what I took, is the trying to deal with humor as a, as a vehicle for people to enjoy. I'm not the kind of person who goes out on the street and demonstrates. I want to do it. I want to build something that would be a contribution to a better world. Maybe that's corny because that's not a privilege of, of us to be able to do that. And yet I think of myself as taking that risk. It's worth it. It is worth it uh, for a purpose. That's what is important for me, to have taken the risk to try to build community. At 86 years old, I'm off to my next adventure, so be looking for me. You'll see me.